Hey guys, I'm Chad Hoover. Welcome to today's video where I'm gonna to talk to you about how to properly tie down your kayak in the bed of a truck, how to avoid a premature failure in one of the number one spots that kayak fishermen damage their fishing kayak. Fish on! That's a toe, brother. Golly! All right, so in my later years of kayak fishing and in my career, I have the blessing of having a trailer to be able to back my kayaks down in most prepared surfaces that I go. But I love going to a lot of backwoods, out of the way, middle of nowhere places. And for the most part, when I'm fishing a river, you don't have ability to park a trailer in a place where you're you know, shoveling from or where you're parking to go on a river fishing trip. So I've been doing this for years, but not in recent years have I put it out there on video. So I'm gonna show you guys how to properly load your fishing kayak in the bed of a truck. I'm gonna talk about how to properly tie it down to avoid damage in your kayak. And I'm also gonna talk about a common practice that leads to premature failure of fishing kayaks. And it's something that almost every kayak angler that loads their kayak in the back of their truck does wrong. All right, so the number one reason that folks damage their kayak and cause them to fail prematurely is that they basically back the truck up to the kayak or they pull the kayak up right to the back of the truck, just like this, okay? Then when they get ready to load it, I've got a deck system in here, so it makes it even a little higher and it makes it a little bit more difficult. But for the most part, even if you just put the, the, the kayak up on the tailgate, like I'm about to show you, the problem is, is when you grab the back handle and you slide it up like so, you're dragging that keel at the front, okay? And if you notice, you've got a very localized impact. Now, kayaks can last a really long time if they're dragged flat, if they run over rocks in the river and things like that. In fact, I did a video several years ago where I drug a kayak 15.2 miles and still went out and paddled that fishing kayak. I'll actually link that video up in the description box so that you know what I'm saying. But when you angle the boat and you drag it where it's just the keel rubbing back and forth, over the course of just a little while, you could potentially wear through the keel and damage that kayak and in some cases it's irreparably damaged and i see this happen a lot guys get the back end up they come grab the front handle and then they slide the boat up into the truck just like so nothing wrong with that it's exactly how most people do it intuitively let me show you a better way to do it so basically what i'm going to do is i'm going to take my kayak out and i'll show you how to do it taking it out for how you should do it. Almost always, I'm gonna carry a change of clothes and a changing mat in my back seat. So what I like to do is take that changing mat, throw it on the ground. Take your fishing kayak, slide it out of the back of the truck and set the nose on that changing mat. After you set the nose on the changing mat, instead of dragging it that way, simply grab the back handle and walk it around and set it down on the ground. Now, all you have to do to effectively load your fishing kayak in the back of your truck is do it the opposite. Put your mat down, then simply drag your fishing kayak up, put the bow on it just like so. Then when you grab the back of your fishing kayak and you pick up on it and set it on the tailgate of the truck, you're not dragging that keel on the concrete. Then you grab your front handle, slide it up, slide it up into the back of the truck and you're ready to tie it down. So now that I've walked you through how to avoid prematurely damage in your kayak, let me show you a couple things to keep in mind while you're tying it down to also avoid damaging it. All right, so most pickup trucks have little corner tie downs in the pocket. And on my truck, I pretty much leave two straps in those corner pockets at all times. Now, one of the biggest mistakes, one of the biggest things that I see anglers doing wrong is they either throw a ratchet strap over the kayak, they run a ratchet strap, through the handles or they actually go out around the end, go through the handle, wrap it, put it over here, hook up the ratchet strap and then start ratcheting. The problem is, especially when it's hot, these boats get soft. In addition to that, if you get any slippage whatsoever, then the boat's gonna end up over here in the turning lane and you're gonna have a problem. So I'm gonna show you a better way to tie down your fishing kayak. I'm gonna show you a more effective way to keep it from sliding left and right, and you're not gonna damage it by running that ratchet strap through your front handle or your side handles, which I highly advise you avoid doing. So the vast majority of fishing kayaks are set on top. And so what you're gonna do is you're just gonna simply disconnect your strap and you're gonna find the closest scupper hole. You're gonna run that strap through the scupper hole. You're gonna bring it around, feed it back through itself, and you're gonna run that slack until you just have it semi-tight right in the middle, just like so, okay? Go around to the other side and we're gonna do the exact same thing. 
I know this may seem like a lot of extra crap, but I promise you it's gonna save you a lot of heartache in the long run. It's a safer, more beneficial way to transport your kayak and it's gonna keep it even going down the road so it doesn't get loose and slide around unnecessarily. But the most important thing you, you're gonna do is avoid damaging your fishing kayak by over ratcheting the hull, over ratcheting the handles, or just cracking something because you just make the straps too tight. So again, now, once you've got that done just like that, I recommend the 12 foot strap so you can do this little trick right here. Grab one strap, come to the other side, grab the other strap, get out at the front of the boat and simply pull back and forth until that boat is nice and taut. Once you've got it nice and taut, what I usually do is come over, just give it another little short tug, go to the other side, give it another little short tug, just like so. All right, guys, so here's the, here's the kicker. Here's the part that's the most important. The reason you don't wanna make these super tight is you're about to take up that slack by going around the strap and making a half hitch. That's just a loop. And then as you pull that down, just squeeze the strap and pull it taut. What this is gonna now do is if this buckle fails, this is simply a strap. Okay, after you make that first half hitch, make a second one, come back through your strap and split it, and then go underneath the boat, okay? Come back around to the other side, do the exact same thing, make that half hitch right behind the buckle, cinch it down, pull that taut, come back around, do another half hitch. After you've got that half hitch in, again, split the straps. And then the cool thing about it is, come back underneath right here and just tie yourself a little safety overhand loop. Bam. Add a flag to the end of your boat to make sure that you comply with local and federal regulations. This boat ain't going anywhere. It's gonna be a lot safer. You can drive on the highway with it. You can drive off-road with it bouncing around. You're not gonna prematurely wear out your hull. You're not gonna damage your handles and you're not gonna crack a scupper or warp your hull by cranking it down too tight with a ratchet strap. So guys, I'm Chad Hoover. I hope you got some value out of this video. If you did, leave me a comment in the comment section below. But that there is how you properly tie down a fishing kayak in the bed of a pickup truck.